So I hope you enjoyed uh, that interview uh, with James Scott. So James Scott is quite a well-known political scientist, um, an American, and he um, he is known for his studies of peasant society. He is known for his interest in uh, resistance, um, in, in anarchy. Uh, we're going to be actually... In another course in this series of e-courses, we're going to be dipping into his latest book, which is called The Art of Not Being Governed. But uh, right now, we're going to uh, reflect on some of the things that he mentioned about his personal experience of doing field work and the research methods that he uh, employed when he did his field work. All of these concepts, if you aren't familiar with them already, you will be getting more comfortable uh, with using in the northern Malay state of Gada. Now, as someone who lived in a Malay community, I'm particularly interested in reading about how others have described the uh, the everyday interactions between people in Malay communities. So I really enjoyed reading this book and I'm going to be highly recommending that you read it when we talk about research methods. But what about his research methods? What did he what did he say? He initially turned up in this um, in this village and uh, he decided he was going to do something on fishing villages, but he said, oh, it's far too complicated because people go fishing twice a day and you have two harvests a day. And if you do a study of a rice community, there's two, there's two rice harvests a year. And so it's a lot, a lot easier. So he's interested, his research question that he's primarily interested in, he was, um, he had his research question which led him to make decisions about his research methods and we're going to be talking about the significance of the link between research questions and research methods later on. But he initially went in and he said, okay, I want to do a survey, I want to do a survey um, and that is one way of collecting primary data and so he had 70 households and he, he began to do that survey, but at the same time as doing the survey, and we don't know the details of that survey, if you want to take the time to look at his book, he may include details of the survey that he conducted. But one of the things that he reflects on quite a lot is the way in which he ended up by doing long-term participant observation. Now, I would argue that this is another example of the way in which people involved in qualitative research, which is based on field work, long-term presence and involvement in the community that they are studying, the way that often people do these things by accident. That was my personal experience. Malinowski, um, Malinowski had his, um, his uh, Malinowski was in Papua New Guinea for the time that he was because he had to stay away from Australia because uh, of the First World War. Similarly, um, Derek Freeman didn't, uh, in his research planning, plan to go to Samoa and to be inducted as a chief that would give him access to a, a certain um, demographic of older elites. Uh, he didn't have that in any way as part of his research methodology plan that he would have given his supervisor before he left uh, to do field work in Samoa. Absolutely not. And so this is a consistent theme that although it's important to be making plans and decisions about your research methods, there is this thing called serendipity and providence, which means that things happen. And when opportunities uh, come up and you have access uh, in ways that you could not have imagined, it's important for you to take that opportunity to make the most of it. 
He made 4,000 pages of notes. And we're going to be talking about the importance of field notes. Not once, not twice, maybe even as many as three times through the course of these courses. Because we cannot emphasize the importance of writing in doing ethnographic research. Another thing which uh, resembled uh, what Malinowski and Margaret Mead and Derek Freeman did is they emphasized, he emphasized learning a peasant dialect, the Gada dialect of Malay, which is actually quite similar to the Patani dialect of Malay that um, I learned. Another, another thing is that he critiqued, he, he politely poked fun at people who only fly in, take survey, fly out, and write, write articles. So uh, he did take a survey, but at the same time as taking the survey, he wrote an article. And so in this respect, we could describe James Scott, James Scott's um, research methodology because it involved doing a survey, but also doing a survey alongside long-term uh, participant observation, that he was doing what we call mixed methods research, which combined quantitative uh, methods, which are interested in numbers, as, as well as qualitative methods, which are dealing with primary data which doesn't come in the form of numbers. He commented, I went two slides on, sorry about that. He commented on um, the way that when he was doing his participant observation and doing all of these surveys, that things happened in the community, things that he did not expect. And so we could compare this with Malinowski and uh, although Malinowski didn't have a specific research question when he went to Papua New Guinea because he wasn't expecting to be there so long, um, he, became, he became interested in certain things that just happened. And uh, you should not go into your field research with absolutely no research question and just waiting for things to happen. You will become interested in this, you'll become interested in that, and you will be there for way too long, and you will become confused, and at the end of the day you probably won't finish. But even, even so, when you go specifically focused on an issue, which for James Scott was the way in which um, mechanisation was affecting the way that farming was done in Gaddaf, and the issue of peasantry and uh, peasant culture and resistance. There were things that happened that led him to observe all sorts of things. So were these diversions or were these opportunities? And he would very much reply that these were opportunities that should not be um, that should not be uh, mistaken as diversions. He actually does more uh, research in a Malay village and he makes the interesting comment that some people said to him, and he was at the University of Wisconsin-Madison, where there is actually uh, some very, very fine Thai uh, specialists um, uh, including Catherine Bowie, who is a former Tamasat University uh, faculty member, I believe. He, he, was, he was told that if you went and spent two years in Malay Village, it would be career-ending. And this is certainly not the case. And uh, this is another way of saying that um, spending time doing fieldwork for anthropologists is something that one all of us who want to do a good job in social research and are rigorous in their methodology should aim to spend significant times so that we can learn language and really observe things through at least one full calendar year. Um, he also made some comments, some interesting comments about the things that led him to 
pick his fieldwork site. And one of the things that he commented on is that he picked a site that others had written about, and he specifically mentions a Japanese uh, researcher. And remember, uh, remember that Malinowski went into Papua New Guinea, having read some of the things that colonial officials, armchair anthropologists, missionaries and travellers had already written. And so uh, if we are choosing a field site where there are advantages and disadvantages for us choosing a field site that others have been in, the advantages is that we, uh, some of the groundwork has already been done and we are able to point out differences that we have observed uh, uh, from the observations made by the previous person. There are disadvantages and there is a good argument for picking fresh research sites. But regardless of your position, I think that it's a good point that he makes. And so that is all we have for uh, in talking about James Scott um, and his Weapons of the Week. And um, I really hope that you will enjoy uh, later on in the course uh, reading some of his descriptions of village life uh, in this part of um, Malaysia. And if you are a student who actually comes from a rural background, you will recognize uh, many, many things. And that is the uh, signature of good ethnographic writing. Uh, it takes you back home. Um, so, thanks for watching uh, this uh, in this this introduction to research methods through the lens of the careers of important people who uh, are experienced researchers and have got very high skill levels in research methods. Until next time. Bye-bye.